You may have seen Cool Runnings over a dozen times, but you may have never known these 10 behind-the-scenes facts about the movie. And the first one is that in earlier versions of the screenplay, Cool Runnings was going to go by the title Blue Maga, which is a Jamaican word for skinny, and the film was going to be a documentary. But after cycling through several writers and directors, the film became a sports comedy with the much better title Cool Runnings. But apparently this title doesn't translate well to foreign audiences, because in France it's called Rasta Rocket, in Italy it's 4 Below Zero, and in Norway the film is called Cold Buttocks. When Disney fine-tuned the script and was ready to cast the four main characters, they had a pretty high-profile list of celebrities in mind. Their first picks were big stars of the 90s, like Denzel Washington, Eddie Murphy, Wesley Snipes, and Marlon Wayans, but they all passed. So Disney moved on to their second choices, who included Cuba Gooding Jr., Jeffrey Wright, and Eric LaSalle. But none of them were interested either, so they had to widen their search through an open audition to eventually find the actors we see in the film today. Even though Disney couldn't get their first or second picks to play any of the Jamaican characters, they did manage to score one person on their Dreamcast list, who was John Candy. And he loved the script and his character so much that he even accepted a pay cut to be in the movie. Sadly though, Cool Runnings was his last film to hit theaters while the late great actor was still alive, because Candy tragically died of a heart attack just four months after the film's release. Aside from the crash at the end of the film, which I'll talk more about later, nearly everything else about the movie is historically inaccurate. Not even the main actor's Jamaican accents are authentic, but that doesn't mean they didn't try. The director John Turtletob originally did have the actors speak with authentic Jamaican accents, but Disney executives were worried that audiences wouldn't be able to understand them, so the actors were told to sound more like Sebastian the Crab. Turtletob was offended by this demand and even pushed back against it, but ultimately he had to give in or risk losing his job, so the actors did their best to sound like the most authentically Jamaican Sebastians that they could be. Bobsledding is a very dangerous sport and isn't something the actors could be taught in a reasonable amount of time, and because of Hollywood insurance policies, the producers couldn't risk putting the actors' lives in danger by having them ride down the track, not even as a passenger with a professional driver. So all that the actors were allowed to do for the film was learn how to run and jump in the sled, and then they had to stop at the end of the runway before going down the track. You probably remember that quirky and lovable Sanka has a habit of carrying around an egg wherever he goes, because he believes it's magical and lucky. And the reason why it never breaks during all of their hijinks is because it's actually made of plastic. And as a bonus fact, Dougie Doug still has it after all these years. Another fact about Sanka is from the scene when he's covered in frost while sitting in the back of an ice cream truck. But that's not real frost, because the hair and makeup crew used dry ice to create Sanka's look which was filmed on location in Jamaica, but the ice cream truck wasn't actually refrigerated. So Dougie Doug was actually just acting cold while burning up a sweat in the back of a metal truck. Cool Runnings is filled with many other hilarious scenes, but there was one scene in the script that the actors didn't think was funny and refused to film, which was when the team would build a snowman and finish it by placing a joint in its mouth. The four actors found the gag to be lazy and stereotypical, and so they staged a mini protest to have it taken out of the script. One of the major plot points of the movie is when the coach confesses he was stripped of his gold medals because he cheated by adding weight to the front of the sled. But in reality, this is actually somewhat legal, because contestants are allowed to add weight to a bobsled in order to reach the minimum weight requirement if the team isn't heavy enough to reach it by themselves. But it is illegal to add more weight beyond that limit. Even though most of the movie is historically inaccurate, the most realistic part of the story was the crash during the Olympic finals. There was no safe way to recreate the disastrous crash in real life, so the director simply used the actual NBC sports footage from the 1988 Olympics, and then filmed some close-ups to add dramatic tension. Click a video for more great content right here on Fun Fact Films.